Happy Wednesday, Fight Fans. Welcome to another Instagram live interview with your boy, Mystic Black. Sorry if my voice is a little low. Having some voice issues this week, but we're still here. We're making it happen for you guys. Anything. Thank you to everybody yesterday for tuning into my interview with Bruce Buffer. That was amazing. You can still watch it on my page. But today we are here to talk to bare knuckle heavyweight champion, former UFC veteran, Joey Beltran. He'll be joining us here very shortly. We'll get it started. Hope everybody's having a good week. Good weekend coming up. Uh, a lot of news, you know, happening today in this in this uh, sports industry. You know, a couple of NBA games were postponed because we got to, you know, bring a lot of significance to what was what's happening in this country. So hope everybody's aware of all of that. And uh, hopefully we can make a big change because we need to. Uh, Joey Beltran will be in here shortly and we will begin in one moment. What's up, guys? Oh, big shout out to my boys at Rude uh, Athletics. Appreciate you guys over there. Uh, if you guys want any of this merch, send me a DM and we'll get it to you. We'll make it happen. And I got some news on my new merch coming out as well. Very soon. Very, very soon. I promise. I've been saying it for a little bit, but I just want to make everything perfect for you guys. So. One moment, Joey will be hopping in. There he is. Connected. Sure, everything is working. There he is. Can you hear me, Joey? Yeah. Perfect. There he is, Joey Beltran, bare knuckle heavyweight champion, joining me here on Instagram Live. How you doing today, Joey? Uh, I'm doing all right. Tell me, since we're having trouble loading this live video, I'll try again later. One second. Try again. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you, but... You can see me? If yeah. you can see me and hear me, I think we're all good. All right. All right, we can see you. Perfect, 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 Joey. Joey, how you doing uh, during this COVID time period? How are you keeping yourself busy? I know it's been a weird time in America. Have you been able to go to the gym and train? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough that the, uh, the owner of the gym that I worked at <clears throat> was very understanding of my situation. And like, basically, like, you know, go in and train with the lights off, make sure we don't draw attention, you know, park, you know, far away in the parking lot and just go do what I need to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Glad you're able to train because there's a lot of people who are not even able to go to the gym. They got to train at home, but everything is different. Um, are you training with gloves? I know you're fighting in bare knuckle now. Are you using gloves when you train or you kind of try to get used to it just using your, 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 your knuckles? Uh, yeah, man, I do. All, I do all just standard boxing training. Like every once in a while, like maybe like once every couple of weeks, like I'll do like a, like a mid session with no gloves. And about once a week, like I'll have, um, uh, I'll have my sparring partner just put on MMA gloves and I'll just defend with uh, bare hands. But other than that, man, it's pretty standard boxing training. Absolutely. Uh, Joey, if you don't mind, I want to just go back a little bit. You started boxing when, at the age of 10, you know, got into some, some street fights. What did you learn from that experience from when you were younger? Uh, well, you know, I just was, <laughs> it just wasn't a foreign act mm -hmm. <laughs> to get punched in the face, especially with like, you know, the first bare knuckle fight is like it's nothing new. I've been here before, and uh, you know, so it was it was not something that I had to get used to. Absolutely. So, how come you didn't end up going into boxing, but you ended up in MMA in the earlier days? Um, I mean, honestly, it's just MMA just kind of happened, like, like boom, like it was just the right place at the right time for me, as far as like. Uh, it was like 2005, and I was living out in Hawaii. Um, I was going to school out there, and uh, and 2005, 2006, not really sure exact year. Yeah. And 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 so then, like, it was already MMA was already huge at that point. 
Um, and I remember like Kendall Grove was on, was on, was on the Ultimate Fighter. Fighter. It was a big yeah. deal. It was a big deal. Like when all the bars and shit, like when he would come on, like it was pretty cool. It's pretty cool experience. So, anyways, when I moved back home from Hawaii, I just linked up with a, an old, a team uh, called North County Fight Club. Um, and um, yeah, man, it had some 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 UFC veterans already on the team, like Jason Lambert and Eddie Sanchez. And I just fucking just got to work, man. <laughs> just yeah. got to work. And then within a few months, like, <clears throat> you know, they're like, there's an opportunity for you to get a fight. And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm ready. And they're like, oh, it pays 1200 bucks. I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> and so fucking that's how that went. And then I lost my first fight by decision. And then, but I got hooked, man. I got hooked, the adrenaline rush and. And like being out there and feeling the crowd, and and uh, so I just kept going back and had a pretty good run at it. Yeah, and I was going to ask you that. Um, in two thousand seven, you made your strike for it t- debut. I wanted to see how you made that connection because not too many people in their debut fights get to fight for a very prominent company such as Strike Force at the time. Yeah, man, uh, I was I was lucky. Um, and it wasn't one of the big promotions, but I mean, it was still big. It was like. At an auditorium in San Jose, it was 3,000 people, and it was called Strike Force Young Guns. So yeah. it was like, like I said, like, like, like the title said, Young Guns is like the up and comers. And um, so it was fucking really, really big deal to fight in front of 3,000 people for your first show, still. So, like I said, like I got that adrenaline rush, adrenaline dump that people talk about as well. And, you know, and, and uh, so it was a good learning experience my first time out, man. I just got real lucky. Absolutely. And, and I was then, at super, I yeah. think it was, at, it was at super heavyweight, so maybe there weren't that many super heavyweights on tap. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were like, in that in those days, you were like two over 265, like 300 pounds, right? I was like 285 for my first fight. 285 for your first fight. Wow, super heavyweight, yeah, it was the, with, the, with the bigger boys. Uh, then you moved on, fast forward, you moved on to the UFC. You fought the likes of the Pat Barry Current heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic, you went to, you went uh, full three rounds with him. What did you take? What did you take from your experience fighting within uh, the uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship? I mean, honestly, dude, it was a fucking rough time for me uh, um, mentally, and uh, you know, I was going through a lot of per- shit in my personal life, like self-inflicted. You know, <clears throat> you know, it's just dealing with like drugs and alcohol, and just like a failing, uh, like a failing marriage and just like, ah, uh, just constantly just feeling like I'm a, like I'm a piece of shit, you know, just cause like I'm fucking, I'm fucking up on my wife. I'm horrible. Then I'm fucking doing, getting drunk and doing blow when I should be fucking trained. <laughs> like, but then like, I would still clean up my act for like six weeks, go out there and fucking perform under the big lights. And it was just a rough, it was a rough, <laughs> it was a rough place to fucking grow up mentally and you know, it's been, literally grow up, and I grew up there, man. Those years, it's like, all right, you know, and a lot of, there's a lot of shit that goes on behind closed doors that people don't really talk about, and you know, people don't really see, like, they just see when you show up that night, and they don't care what you have going on in your life, like, they just fucking, they paid their money, it's time for you to fight, and, you know, and that's, I've always, I've been okay with that, I've always been okay with that, like, regardless of what the fuck is going on, like, what storm my personal storms I'm going through, I will fucking suit up and show up and do my job. You know, I'll fucking put on my work boots and go to work. You know, I have that fucking, that, that field worker immigrant mentality. I've always had that. Like, you know, I, when I, <clears throat> when I drive to the gym or, or I stop somewhere like by Home Depot or whatever, and I fucking see like, you know, like the workers, like the migrant workers outside, like waiting to get picked up. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's fucking, that could have been me. Like, you know, that could have been me. What, you know, because, like, my, you know, way back when, like, my mom chose to take me instead of my dad taking me, you know? And so it's like, who knows what could happen if I went with that fucking that animal? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, but I went with my mom, and now I'm fortunate. I'm able to play sports and go to good school growing up, and then now I'm fucking fighting. But I still, like, I know that that could have been me, so I just have that fucking work, that work ethic, that mentality the whole fucking time, the whole my whole career. Like, this is my job. I never did it to be famous. I never did it to fucking get <clears throat> get comments or likes or shit like that. You know, like it was just uh, let's get to work, baby. 
Yeah. Was there anything uh, specific that like got you past those, those times? So where, you know, it was, it was very rough for you. And I know you ended up dropping down a light heavyweight too, which is very hard because you were coming down from heavyweight. So, you know, that takes a lot of discipline, which I'm sure yeah, you man. have you know, like, plenty of it. Like, like, it's, you know, I'm a very, uh, well, what, what, what got me good was fucking going to rehab. Yeah. <laughs> That's what got me back on track. Yeah. But I mean, but before that, like I've always been an extremist, like, so to be an extremely disciplined person and come down from 285 to like 250 and then eventually down to 205 and then even down to 185 for two fights. Like it was just like, I'm an extremist. Like I'm all in whatever I do. I'm all in. So if you tell me, okay, we're going to fucking fight at 185. I like that shit. Like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, man. And I'll fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sick in the head that way. You know? <laughs> but also too, in the negative aspect, like, Oh, we're going, you know, oh, we're going on a run to Vegas for three days and we're probably not going to sleep. All right, let's fucking go. You know, so. You know, hey, but now, now I really just do a better job of just fucking just keeping my life like on even keel and balance. And, oh. and um, you know, and just like even these fights, what's funny is that like as some people may view like bare knuckle as fucking barbaric and extreme. Like, me mentally, like, I'm in the fucking most chillest state, personally, that I've ever been. So, like, this is nothing to me. Like, this is like, all right, well, whatever. I got to deal with another human being, and all he has is two weapons. Like, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was going to ask you that. Uh, and I and commend you for getting past those, you know, demons in the hard parts in your life and going to rehab and taking care of yourself because that's a very hard thing to do. Um, and it's it's perfect because I was going to ask you, what led you to get into bare knuckle? Because, you know, MMA is a sport. You worry about wrestling. You worry about jujitsu. Now you got bare knuckle. Just like you said, two hands. A little bit more brutal, but what led you to wanting to fight in bare knuckle? You know, honestly, well, for starters, I've always been a fan of bare knuckle fighting. I've known who. Yeah. I knew who Bobby Gunn was. I used to watch those old, like, Irish travelers. Like, uh, what's his name? Gypsy Boy, Jimmy McCory over in England. Like, I watched all those YouTube videos and shit. And so then, like, what had happened was, is I was trying really, really hard. When I went into rehab, right, and I came out, I was trying to, um, well, first of all, like, my one of my old managers hit me up, and he got me a fight out in Russia, like a short notice fight, five weeks. <laughs> Go out and fight Sergey Karatanov. Yes, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> in five weeks. You know, like I said, I'm a little fucking extreme sometimes. So uh, five weeks, I got ready, went out there, I fought his ass, went all three rounds, lost the decision, uh, but did really, really good. So then I came home, I was like, okay, I'm, I, can, I can still fight. I'm going to still fight. I still got it in me. And I, fought, and I started training, couldn't get any MMA fights. Like, for, for the life of me, I could not get any fights. Um, and so uh, one of my old coaches hit me up. He's like, hey, man, these are... These bare knuckle people were asking about you. Would you be interested in doing it? And he at the time was actually working with uh, Rowdy Beck. Rowdy Beck Rollins. Beck, so. Beck, Beck Rollins, yep. Yeah, 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 over at Alliance. So that's how that – so basically, like, I kind of piggybacked off her. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'll openly say, like, had they not wanted her so bad, maybe I would not be being bare knuckle world champ right now, which is kind of crazy. But so I got that first fight. It was Tony Lopez. It was just kind of stepping into the unknown, you know. We don't really know what's happening, and uh, just went out there and just scrapped and put on a beautiful, put on a beautiful, beautiful fight. And you know, the funny part is, just like, <laughs> what made that fight so so much more epic? And a lot of people don't fucking talk about it. That was is, uh, it. Was my next my next question? I was going to ask you about that fight, but go ahead. <laughs> is it? It was at six thousand foot elevation. Like, come on, and we're heavyweights. And we and we put on that put on that show. So and was, you guys won every and you guys won every round, every full round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was pretty fun. Yeah. I, after that fight, um, I was gonna ask you about that Tony Lopez fight, and everybody, you should watch that fight if you have a chance. It is on YouTube. One of the most incredible bare knuckle fights I've ever watched. Um, after that fight, did you feel like, man, this is rough? You know, this bare knuckle thing. I don't know if I want to do this, or did you feel like, you know what? I was born and bred for this. This is nothing to me. I can do this again, and I want to do this again. Well, I was in the, what had happened was, is that originally, like, when we got out there, I thought I was. Oh, we lost him.
Lost Joey for a second there. Give it one moment. Should come back in. Oh, give me one moment, guys. We'll get Joey back in here. One moment, guys. Joey will be right back. Just had a little cut off. He'll be right back. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Always appreciate it. Joey will be right back. Just having some connection issues. There we go. Just sent you a request, Joey. I don't know if you see it. Should be connecting shortly. Instagram Live, always giving some issues. <laughs> uh, one moment, guys. I uh, lost Joey again. It's right there. Come on. There we go. Now we're good. Can you hear me, Joey? Oh, lost him again. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kirsten. Give it one moment, guys. Just having some technical difficulties. Uh, send it one more time. Yeah, guys, I might have to switch out of Instagram Live, having some technical issues. Just sent it again. It's weird. Good, Joey? Yeah. All right, perfect. I'm so sorry about that. Sometimes Instagram Live has some, has some issues. I'm probably going to end up switching to something else after this, but we're all good. Um, shout out to the boys at Rude, um, Julian at Rude, for sure. Um, as we were talking about before, I asked you the question about after you fought Tony Lopez and how much of a war it was, a fight that everybody should watch, how did you feel after that fight? Did you like, oof, this is a, this is a rough bare-knuckle sport, or you're just like, you know what, I can do this again. I'm ready to do this again. Yeah, man. After that fight, I was like, I can definitely do this again. And and I went into the next fight with, like, kind of the same mentality, like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to hit you more than you're going to hit me, and I'm going to win. And then, um, but unfortunately, like, I took I took a real nasty cut literally, like, the first 10 seconds of the fight. I think I actually had three cuts. <laughs> the guy had a big old hand. Three cuts over my eye within the first, like, 20, 10, 20 seconds of the fight. Yeah. So then, like. I was like, oh, shit. I just totally changed, like, my game plan and approach and tried to fucking, like, survive and get through it. And still, like, attack is hard, man. It was like, ah. And I ended up, like, started doing better. I did a really good third round. And the fourth round, he came out, like, just one, literally one jab. Bah! And it, it started, like, spewing out. The fucking doctors came in and stopped the fight. So then after that, second fight is when I was like, all right, well, I really have to change my approach, man, if I'm going to have any kind of longevity or in this in this sport. And so then I just really got on top of, you know, my head movement, my defense, and, and coming in at different angles and, and make sure that I exit with exit at angles as well and not just fight on a straight line, in and out, in and out, in and out. So 
Uh, I haven't done really well so far since that second fight. I haven't lost, and I haven't had any stitches in my after the fight. So that's how I judge my success. Like, do I have to go get stitches or go to the doctor after? So, uh, Bert Watson was in here, and he said that he remembers your first fight. Just want to give a little shout out to him. He says he, remember, he remembers yeah. your first fight. Good man, right there. Um, yes, and then you went into that fight against Chase Sherman, and you became an excellent performance, and you became the bare knuckle heavyweight champion and the police gazette champion, which is a over hundred year uh, championship. Did that give you the feeling of just like, you know what? I finally got this championship in combat sports and like, this makes it so much worth it. You know, it's funny. Like, yeah, like eventually, like it was a kind of a moment of, uh, yeah, nah, yeah. Almost like relief. Like, fuck. All right. So this whole shit, now it's like the shit was all worth it. Like all this hard, hard journey and all the roller coaster ride that I was on, and for the last thirteen years, like it's kind of like I said, it's kind of leveled out. And uh, now I'm just like still just fucking working harder than I ever have. Probably working harder than I ever did before. And, and now, but you know, mentally and and everything else is just like kind of just like and even like I said, even kill, just cruising in life. And just killing it in the gym, having a good time, killing it in the fights, and, and shit's going good. That's awesome, Joey. And congratulations on winning that championship. If anybody I've watched in uh, combat sports, you definitely deserve that. Um, how do you? What, what do you want Joey Beltran to be remembered as in combat sports? Oh well, I mean, early on, I used to just want to be <clears throat> respected as somebody who was just always willing to put on lay it on the line and go out there and, and, and every time you knew that Joey Beltran was going to fight, it was going to be an entertaining fight. But now, you know, that's, that's changed. Now I'm zeroed in. I want to be known as the best modern day era bare knuckle boxer of, uh, to ever do it. And I want to defend my title five times and retire and uh, walk off into the sunset with that shit. That's what I want to be remembered as the champ. Absolutely. And I was going to ask you how much time you, you think you would want uh, more after defending the belt a couple of times, but you answered it right there. Joey, thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate it. You guys should watch every single one of his fights. I've never watched a boring, boring, boring Joey Beltran fight ever in my life. He's a champion, Bare Knuckle. Do you have any fights coming up or anything you want to tell the people? Uh, I tentatively have heard stuff, but I mean, with the coronavirus and everything, I've literally been told, not exaggerating, this is my fourth date, my fourth day that I've been given. Yeah. So I don't want to fucking jinx it, man. <laughs> okay. Once I, once I get like first, let me get a contract. Second, let me get on a plane, and then I'll tell about. Then I'll feel safe talking about the fight because this is fucking coronavirus, you know. And I get it. I'm not the only one that's getting fucked with by this. So I mean, I I try to be empathetic and, and understand with the promoters. They're doing the best that they can, and you know they they they've put on. Uh, a couple shows now, so things are looking better. So hopefully we can just keep this momentum going and, and I'll be up there soon. But I know for sure I'm not at September 11th. I should be up shortly after. Perfect. And well, we're excited to see you fight, Joey. Once again, thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate it. Have a good one, boss. You got it, brother. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you guys for sticking with the interview. I know there were some technical issues, but we'll work on that. Joey Beltran, thank you so much for the time. This interview will be on my page right after another interview with your boy, Mystic Black. Appreciate you all.